So we are going to be doing a reaction to Miss Amberlynn Reed. I know. She is such a controversial person here on YouTube. And we are going to be talking about her. What I eat in a day. Hi guys, welcome to my channel if you are new and welcome back if you've been around here a while. I'm Kendra, this is Kind Kendra Creates. This is where I share my weight loss journey with you. Hopefully I can help you out along the way if you're on a weight loss journey too. I also do commentary on a number of topics, including health, wellness, fitness, weight loss, stuff like that. And you'll learn about me along the way. So if that stuff sounds good to you, then make sure you are subscribed to my channel. So guys, I do not watch Amberlynn Reed's channel. I don't know about her lore or anything. I just come across reaction channels that talk about her. And I wanted to talk about her because she is kind of like a controversial person here on YouTube. So if you don't know about her, she originally began on YouTube a very long time ago. I want to say maybe like a decade ago. And she started out on a weight loss journey. I believe she started around like 300 pounds. She's become so widely known because instead of losing weight, she gained weight. And I understand it's a rough road, okay? I'm, it's, it's rough on me right now. If y'all checked out my videos, y'all know I'm going through it. Okay, I can understand gaining weight, you know, gaining 15, 20, even 30, 40 pounds. But she went from like 300 something to like almost 600 pounds, y'all. So your girl got way off track. But anyways, I'm gonna criticize her what I eat in a day. <laughs> she is currently trying to get qualified for weight loss surgery. And if you don't know anything about that whole entire process, it's hard to go through all the steps that they want to go through. If you are going through your insurance or if you have a doctor that wants to make sure you're actually ready for the procedure instead of just operating on you. If she's not going through insurance. She's going to be self-pay. So there are some doctors who will just take her money and operate on her. But there are doctors that are concerned about their patients and they want to ensure their success. So they have to go through a lot of steps in order to be cleared for surgery and then also to be successful after surgery. Because people think that you just get the surgery and you just lose the weight and that's it. But there is a lot that goes into it. You guys know that I'm on a weight loss drug right now and it's not just, oh, take the shot, lose the weight. That's not how it works. And that's not how it works with weight loss surgery either. You still have to be in a calorie deficit. You still have to try to eat as healthy as you can. You still have to try to get in as much physical movement as you can. It is an entire lifestyle change. And so that's the reason why I want to talk about like her what I eat in a day and like her healthy habits that she's trying to incorporate and things like that to kind of bring awareness to people and their assumptions of those of us who are on weight loss medications or who are trying to qualify for weight loss surgery. It's not just, you know, eat whatever I want to and lose the weight. Although that does work for some people, but it'll come off, Right because you're generally eating less. If your stomach is smaller or you're taking some kind of drug that enables you to eat smaller portions, you're going to eat less. But eventually you're going to stall or your weight loss is going to stop because you're still eating high calorie foods. So I just wanted to talk about this and just give my opinion on what she's eating and what she's doing and criticize her. <laughs> But it can always be a learning moment for me, for other people. And of course, I want you guys, my viewers, to chime in on what you think about what she's eating or what she's doing. Or do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? So make sure to comment below as we kind of go through uh, some clips. I'm not going to show the whole video. I'm not going to do that because there's a lot of extra stuff in here that's really not needed or whatever. But I'll be talking about some things, but mostly everything I talk about is I'm going to have a clip for it. So if you want to see that, you are in the right place, y'all. What I'm trying to say is I've done 
all of what I can when it comes to like appointments and I've been losing weight and eating better, etc., etc. Now I feel like I need to step it up into like high gear a little bit. Um, I haven't been counting calories. I haven't been counting protein. I haven't been doing any of that. I've just simply been eating the foods that they tell me I'm allowed to eat and just watching my portions. Now I think it's time to start measuring my food and counting my protein and counting my calories. So I... I know that they say that they want me to eat six times a day, especially after weight loss surgery. They want you to eat six very, very, very small meals a day. And they want you to kind of get acclimated with that. So I set myself up a little meal plan, if you will. Um, and there's this like big book slash pamphlet, whatever you want to call that they give you and in that it's it talks about a lot of different things but there is like a nutrition section for like food you're allowed to eat versus food you're not allowed to eat so that was really helpful last night when um planning my meal plan because i'm gonna get a little bit more i don't want to use the word strict but that's kind of the word that i'm going for here is just a little more strict with the food that i'm eating and how much i'm eating and i really want to focus in on protein because protein is very important after weight loss surgery so what i decided to do is i'm going to be eating five times a day because six times a day you know what we'll work up to that and they're very aware they say you know people will work up to six times a day because not a lot of people eat six times a day which i don't even eat six times a day and i'm over you know 500 pounds but it is smaller meals so I'm gonna eat three meals a day and two snacks and my calorie limit is actually 1600 calories. So per meal is 400 calories, per snack is 200 calories. That's gonna be just so much easier for me, like having a set amount of calories I can have per meal. I've done this before in the past and it helps a lot. So by doing that type of calculations, that comes out to 1600 calories and I'm just gonna be eating the foods that they allow. And I know a lot of people are confused because um, I said that they, they allow me to eat fruits and they allow me to have carbs, healthy carbs and whole wheats and grains. They're very uh, like eat grains or they're good for you. Okay, so it's a couple of things that I want to talk about in this portion of the video. So the first thing she talks about is the way that she's eating. You know, she's been losing weight, but in a previously she did talk about how like right now she's on a plateau um, so this is why she's creating this whole entire video in this way of eating so she's gonna start measuring and counting calories and i totally agree with this train of thought if you find yourself in any kind of plateau the first thing that you need to look at is what you're eating okay so i have no no issues with that if she's really accurately measuring her food and counting her calories that's a great start to try to get out of a plateau and then she talks about how weight loss surgery patients eat six um, times a day. And it's just because their stomachs are tinier. So they can't hold a lot of food at one time. So they're going to eat more often um, because they need to eat because you need to get in your nutrients. But it's smaller meals. And that's the same thing for people on weight loss medication. Those people are encouraged to eat smaller meals and to eat more often because the brain signals are sent to your brain that you're full, even though you haven't really eaten a lot. And so eating regularly keeps your blood sugar levels, you know, level <laughs> so that you are not like passing out and you are not like feeling nauseated from not eating. And then she talks about she's been eating the food that they're allowed to eat on, I'm assuming like from her weight loss clinic. They have a certain diet that they want people to follow. I'm not sure what's on that paper, so I can't really say anything about that. You guys kind of already know how I feel about like restrictions and allowed foods. I don't really feel good about that just as a general like standard for people. I don't feel good about it. It's very case by case to me, like whether you suffer from like an ED and you're working with your therapist to kind of like do that or like you have certain trigger foods and stuff like that. It's very complicated. It's not like all or nothing to me because we live in a real world, right? We, we do. We live in a world where there's fast food. We live in a world where we get tired at the end of the day and we don't feel like cooking. We live in a world where there are events and holiday seasons and people bring you food. We That is the world that we live in. We don't live in a place where we can just say no to foods that we aren't supposed to have, right? 
So I feel like the quicker that you come to reality and you you live in the real world, that is the quicker that you can cope with the real world. So learning how to say no, <laughs> learning how to have things in moderation, learning how to eat smaller portions, those are things to me that are more realistic than the can't have foods. But that's just my personal opinion. What the hell do I know? <laughs> and then she talks about how she's going to be focusing on protein and calories, which is awesome. And she talks about how protein is very important to weight loss surgery patients. And it's important to everyone because proteins are an essential nutrient that we need in our body. It helps with our hair. It helps with our muscle tone. I cannot stress the importance of protein. And it also helps us keep us satiated so we are full and we're not going around starving hungry all the time. And so she institutes the idea of eating five times a day, which is great. You know, I have no qualms about that. Three full meals and two snacks. Now she gets into her calorie limit, which is set at 1600. I don't know where the hell she got that from. I don't know. I don't know why she chose it. You need to eat the calorie limit for you. It is based upon your height, your weight, your age, your activity level, and also your sex. Did I miss anything? I don't think I did. And I can tell you right now that 1600 is too low for Amberlynn Reed. I can tell you right now it is. Even though she's sedentary, she's 500 pounds. I'm a 200 pound lady. I'm older than her. I am a bit taller than her and I'm more active than her. But my calories are around 1600 and that probably is too low. So... The problem with having too low of calories is you run the risk of getting hungry. And she says that this is something that she's done in the past and it worked. Yeah, it worked, but for how long? If your calorie limit is not where it needs to be and aligned with you for your body and your goals, it's not going to be sustainable for you because you are going to get hungry. And, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a honeymoon phase with diets and dieting and ways of eating or lifestyle changes or whatever. In the beginning, you are pumped up, you are amped up, you are ready, you don't feel hungry. You know, you're, you're strong with, you know, getting rid of the temptation and all of this stuff. And I get it. But baby, if you 500 pounds and you trying to eat 1600 calories a day, you're going to be hungry. I don't care what anyone says. You are going, if you have a normal size stomach, or you're not on any kind of weight loss medicaid, ma'am, you're going to be hungry. I don't care what anybody says because I'm on a weight loss medication and I'm on about 1600 calories a day. And sometimes I eat more than that because a, cause a girl is hungry or either it's just something I want to eat. So, you know, I'm like, I, I ate it <laughs> and I went over my calorie limit and it is what it is. So once again, we have to live in a real world because that is the world in which we live in. We do not live in bubbles. And then she talks about eating carbs and fruit, which I agree with. There's nothing wrong with carbs. There's nothing wrong with fruit. People get it twisted because there are more than just prepackaged processed foods that are carbs. You have things that like fruit, a lot of fruit are carbs, sweet potatoes are carbs, quinoa is carbs. So there are a lot of things that are healthier carbs for you versus what you automatically think of. And even pasta and rice and bread, you can still get whole grain options that are a little lower on the glycemic index. And so, so with things that are lower on the glycemic index, they tend to digest a little bit slower. So you're fuller for a little bit longer. What I am eating today is not much any different of what I have been eating. It's just going to be less portions and more frequently because I noticed I obviously I've been eating over 1600 calories. There are days where I do probably eat about that, but there are days where I eat more than that, obviously. And I am taking out some things that I've been allowing myself to have. Like I've been allowing myself to have like banana pudding. They're like these little tiny banana puddings. Um, and like Nutri-Grain bar here and there and stuff like that, but I'm, a, I'm not going to allow myself to have that. And also I have had Yasso, which is a hundred calories frozen yogurt, um, taking that out as well. And little things are now going to be swapped. Like if I have milk or cheese, I'm going to stick to low fat instead of just like regular fat, um, I'm not going to allow myself to have any more like salamis or like sausage 
steaks or anything like that because they want you to stick to lean meats at this part of the journey here so there is going to be a few things that are going to be different it's just definitely healthier and less calories is my goal and what i'm aiming for here okay so on this next part she basically talks about how what she's been eating is pretty much what she eats today but she says she has been eating larger portions and more calories and so I don't know, I just have a hard time believing this. And I say that because even if she was, say, eating a thousand more calories, which would be like 2,600 calories, she still should be losing weight because she's 500 pounds. And so I have a hard time <laughs> believing that what she ate today is like what she's been eating for the past couple of weeks or whenever she started this whole weight loss journey thing. I just had to say that because that's just how I feel and I feel that's what it is. Um, and then she talks about taking a lot of things out of her diet, which I don't necessarily agree with, um, I guess to get her ready for weight loss surgery, but the things that she said weren't really bad. So I don't know why she would want to take them out of her diet, especially because she should be eating like way more than 1600 calories. But she talked about little banana pudding cups, I guess. I don't know what that is she talking about, but she said they were little, so I don't see the big deal with that. She talks about Nutri-Grain bars. I don't know what the problem is with those. I don't really know like how many grams of protein they are, if she's using it as a snack or what, she use, what she's using it as. I don't know. And then she talks about my Yasso bars. Okay, I feel highly offended with my Yasso. Because I love those little things. They taste so good and they're not very high in calories at all. They're a great snack if you're like an ice cream person or whatever and you just, you know, trying to reduce your calories. I recommend it. And then she talks about sausage and salami and steak. Girl, what steak ever did to you? Steak is high in protein and it's high in protein. And I like steak. I eat steak. I don't know what her deal is. Um, I can understand maybe the salami because it's a processed meat or whatever. Um, but once again, we're talking about we're talking about not being perfect. We're talking about, you know, trying to change our habits bit by bit instead of doing everything all at once. And we're gonna talk about that because she talks about that um in a further now clip. But we're gonna talk about that. But girl, nothing is wrong with those things. It's all about moderation and you know eating smaller portions and we're gonna move on so then she does a little grocery haul or whatever and i had nothing to really say about the things that she was getting on her grocery haul she talked about she she had like meat she had a lot she had ground turkey in there and she had chicken and then she shows a lot of fruits and veggies and i have nothing to say about her grocery haul at all the only thing that i want to say is when you are trying to change your eating habits, you want to get things that you like and things that you enjoy and things that, you know, are good for you. So if you're good with broccoli and carrots, cauliflower and quinoa, this is the stuff that she bought, then you're on the right track. Okay, so the first thing I'm eating is a 200 calorie meal. I know in the beginning of this video, I said I'm going to be calling them snacks and meals. I'm just going to call them all meals. It is what it is because sometimes I'll wake up hungry, sometimes I won't. And I'm currently not hungry, but I have to do this. So I am having 160 calories. This is a Premier Protein. It is the chocolate peanut butter, which is the best one that they have. And this is 40 calories. It's just a mandarin. So I have it logged on my Lose It. That is what I will be using. So this is exactly the amount of calories I needed. 160 and 40 is 200. So now I know that this is something I can continue having. So protein wise, which what I said is very important. Um, obviously Mandarin doesn't have any protein. This has 30. So this is 30 grams of protein for this. So I am gonna go watch YouTube. Maybe actually I might watch 600 pound life because there's a new episode. I'm pretty sure. So, and I forgot to mention, I am drinking. My goal is to drink 64 ounces of water. So I will be having four water bottles. I haven't even taken a sip yet. Whoopsies. So 
I will keep you guys updated through the day. That was a chug. So many rolls, so little time, folks. And this is hard for me, but I think now that I am getting a little bit more stricter, I am no longer going to be drinking soda. That is hard. That is very hard because I love carbonation. I am a Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, caffeine-free type of gal. And I, I think it's time I just, I give it up. So today is also day one of that. <laughs> a lot of changes for, for me and it's stressful. It's, I don't know, my mental health is very like, up and down and right now it's kind of low so like all these changes is like not helping because this is a perfect example of a time where I just would give up and I would say you know what I don't feel like doing this today so let me order Penn Station if you don't know what Penn Station is it is a sub place like for sandwiches and stuff I love it and I'm craving it right now but I know it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything good for me. So. Okay, so let's talk about this next clip. She <laughs> says that she woke up, but she wasn't hungry. If you're not hungry, don't eat, point blank. I mean, unless you're on some type of medication to where, you know, that, that, that blunts your hunger, you still need to eat, but she's not on that. So she has a normal appetite and normal hunger, like a normal person. So if you're not hungry, don't eat. And then, so she eats the protein shake, which is high in calories. I mean, excuse me, high in protein. And then she eats an orange or whatever, or tangerine or whatever. I wouldn't say this is a complete like meal or breakfast because it's nothing but liquid, right? Okay, it's high in protein, but it's nothing but liquid. It's a setup for you to be hungry shortly, <laughs> you know? Some people can do well with protein shakes, but if you know that like you you don't do well with that and you get hungry, don't don't have a protein shake as a meal or a snack because all it's gonna do is just anger you. <laughs> and you're probably gonna wind up eating more than what you would have if you wouldn't have had that protein shake. And then she talks about her goal is to get in 64 ounces of water. This is a great goal to have. We all need to be drinking more water. We need to make sure that we're drinking water. And it's a great start. Should she be drinking more than 64 ounces? Yes, but it's a great start from the rumblings of the internet because the internet is just a great place for information. You should be drinking at least half your weight in water. I don't know how true that is, but I try. I try to do that. I try to do that and it's a lot of water. A lot of water, and she has like health issues and things like that where you know she has like water weight and stuff like that, so she needs to make sure that she's uh drinking water. And then she talks about eliminating, she talks about eliminating her diet coke habit, which you do want to stop drinking sodas if you are drinking the caloric <laughs> versions of them. But diet coke has no calories. I don't have any personal qualms about Diet Coke. I know some people stop drinking it and they find that they lose weight because the way that it affects their bodies or sometimes the artificial sugars in them affects their cravings um, for sweets and things like that. So you just kind of have to find what works for you. I don't drink anything but water just because I'm just, I just don't crave it. I don't desire it. I don't want it. It's not like my vice. I think that if you're struggling, then just cut down gradually. Um, and then she talks about that, you know, having her mental health take a hit and then all of these changes that she's trying to incorporate all at the same time. It's, it's tough. It's rough. And so that's why I'm an advocate for just like taking your time and incorporating things slowly and just, you know, being patient with yourself. So if you craving that Diet Coke, get it, girl, because it don't have no calories. <laughs> Especially if you are going through a tough time and you're having a, a, a difficult time incorporating all these changes because this can be extremely daunting. And this is why people quit their, their diets or their healthy living because they're trying to incorporate so many things at the same time. And it's very difficult for someone who is used to just eating whatever, whenever, however. And, you know, it, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot on her plate. And she talks about, you know, sometimes like she feels like she wants to give in or give up. 
and she wants to go eat from a sub place, girl, eat that sub. <laughs> and I say that because you're under eating at 1600 calories a day for your size. I cannot imagine that a bread and meat and vegetables and a little mayo here or whatever is going to really just trash your day and trash your diet. Moral of that story is if you want a sub, eat the sub. Just make sure that you fit it into your calorie limit for the day. So calorie wise, it's 408 calories. I was so close. It's fine. It's eight calories and only 37 protein. Ma'am. Okay. So Damn, this looks like a lot of food. So what this is, is we have broccoli. We have a serving of guac, which is just the Whole Foods guac. We have quinoa, onion, and ground turkey, and pico de gallo that I cooked. Let me get a closer up for you guys. That I cooked in with, you know, everything. So that's what she looks like. So let's do a little taste test. No, I already tried it. <laughs> It's so good. Mm. Oh my god, the guac with this. It adds like a creamy moment instead of like adding cheese or whipping cream, if you will. Mm. And I promise the guac is not out of place. I put some taco seasoning and garlic i forgot to uh, mention that so it has like a taco-esque kind of i don't want to use a lot because i didn't want to like do a lot with like the sodium but mm. i usually cut off the stems of the broccoli because texture so in i think one of my recent videos i was cutting broccoli i was cutting the stems off and people in the comments are like why is she doing that it's just a texture thing but a lot of people were like, that's part super healthy. So I'm just going to deal with the texture. Tastes good. I just, I don't know. The texture is just not it for me. Okay, so she makes a comment about that's a lot of food. That don't look like a lot of food. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just does it. <laughs> it looks like a normal portion size. Maybe, maybe because she had so much broccoli there. I don't know, but that didn't look like a lot of food to me at all. It did look like a normal amount of food. But what she was eating, it was a very well-rounded meal to me. She had her uh, non-starchy vegetables, she had her broccoli, she had her grain, she had quinoa, she had her protein, which was a ground turkey, I believe. And then she also had her avocado, which is a healthy fat, it's considered a fruit or whatever. So I don't have anything bad to say about her meal at all. The only thing, the only other comment that I have to say is about her cutting the stems off because of texture. Cut them stems off. If, if, if you don't like something, like don't force yourself to like eat it or force yourself to like want it or whatever. Like if you don't like the texture of the broccoli stems, then cut them off. You know, like why you want to do that? Because Eventually, you're going to get to the point where you're like, I don't want this anymore because you're going to be thinking about those broccoli stems and the texture. So if you don't like the texture of something or you don't like the taste of something, don't try to force yourself to eat it. I had to do that with uh, Brussels sprouts. I tried them more than once and I didn't like them. And so therefore, I'm not going to eat Brussels sprouts because I don't like them. What's the purpose of it? There are so many other vegetables that I can eat besides Brussels sprouts. Okay, so I'm gonna take the toast and I'm gonna put guacamole. I personally think this tastes better than just like regular avocado on toast. Guacamole has a great flavor, especially the guac from Whole Foods it is so good. So the guacamole is 34 calories and one protein. Here is my perfectly cooked egg, what I consider perfect. So I'm also gonna add some Tabasco and a little bit of scallion on top. And I am also going to have a few carrots. So what she has here is also another great meal. I have nothing to say bad about this meal at all. She has bread, that is her uh, whole wheat bread actually. Um, that's her carb. <laughs> She has carrots as her veggie. 
she has a, a little bit of avocado, I guess, or guacamole. I guess she likes that or whatever. Um, it's a healthy fat. No, no issues with it. And then she also has an egg for protein. The only thing that I would recommend is just to increase the amount of food. She's going to be hungry. I, she says she isn't like later on in the video, but I highly doubt it because that would be prop that would be good for me. Um, you know, but she's 500 pounds. So I would probably go with a slice of two uh, sausage, maybe, or um, some bacon, and then another slice of bread. Or maybe a little bit more veggies on the side or within the egg, have some veggies there, kind of make it like a pseudo omelet or whatever. Um, but yeah, if she's finding she's hungry, she just needs to increase the amount of food, um, increase her calories because they're not enough for her size so for my next meal i'm just having leftovers because as i showed you earlier i cut it into threes feline had a third i had a third earlier and now i'm having the rest and instead of having broccoli i'm making cauliflower okay so i put it all in a pan to heat it up instead of putting the leftovers in a microwave and then of course a serving of guac this right here is 408 calories i'm gonna add a little bit more tabasco because i am in the mood for some spicy and i don't have anything bad to say about this meal either it was hard to kind of like make out what it was but i'm thinking it was chicken quinoa and cauliflower which is well-rounded you have your chicken for your protein you have your quinoa for your grains you have your cauliflower for your non-starchy vegetable. And then she added some healthy fat on there, um, some guacamole, which for taste. But then also the healthy fats give you a little bit more satiety. So I have nothing bad at all to say about this meal. I would say generally speaking, her meals are fairly well-rounded and put together and they should be satiating. I had 375 calories left, but I'm only using 166. I am having some olives just some green olives there that came out to 76 calories and then cottage cheese with pepper i love pepper on cottage cheese this is a serving and that's 90 calories so it's 166 calories so i'm gonna show you guys i'm a screenshot here for you guys you're gonna see i've had 1391 calories today and then I'm also going to screenshot how many protein I've had today. 129 protein. Wow. 21 fat and 42 carbs. That's actually pretty freaking good. Okay. So we are wrapping thing up with a pretty little bow and she's going to have a evening snack. And she says she has 375 calories left, um, but she's only going to eat 166, which is fine. If you're under your calories and you're not hungry, it's no reason to stuff yourself. Um, I don't believe in that unless you haven't eaten at all. And so you need to eat something to make sure that you have your nutrients because you don't want your hair falling out. Um, so I have no problems uh, with that. And then she shows her whole stats for the entire day. And it just looks like she's really high in protein, which is great. And it looks like she's really low in carbs. And it was funny because she was on this whole keto kick and whole keto diet at one point in time. And she said it wasn't good for her because of all the high fat. But yet and still, she's pouring guacamole on everything she eats. So I don't know what's going on with that situation. Um, but she might want to increase her carbs if, you know, she's not needing to do a low carb diet. Um, but you never know with Amberlynn Reed because one minute it's one story and then in the, in the next minute something else could change. And I just know this from reaction channels. Like I said, I don't watch her channel, so I could be wrong about everything I'm saying. You know, if you are interested in watching her content, but you don't want to watch her content, there are creators, reaction channels that have been watching her for a very long time. And they just, you know, give their own opinions about things. And they also give summaries of like, um, you know, her videos and things like that. 
And so just for me watching for a couple of months, you can see, like I said, it's like the wind with her. Her mind changes a lot. Her decisions change a lot. You just never know what you're going to get from her. So, um, but she's very adamant that she's going to do the weight loss surgery and she's trying to lose, um, you know, as much weight as she can before she actually gets it, which is a great idea because anytime you get any kind of surgical procedure, you want to make sure that you are in as best shape as you can be um, because you're going under, you know, so uh, you don't know how your body is going to react to the anesthesia or just the overall shock of being cut open. So you want to be as healthy as you can be before you do any of that, okay? So I found her What I Eat in a Day um, to be very interesting because a lot of her meals were very well-rounded. I don't know if I would eat some of that stuff because it doesn't didn't look very nice or tasty or whatever. So my advice to you is just to do things that are sustainable for you in your life. Something that you can keep up indefinitely. And of course, you don't have to eat, you know, super on point every single day of your life because you're not. And that's impossible. And that would be setting yourself up for failure because, like I said, they're going to be holidays and occasions and nights out and too tired to cook days and things like that. So my advice is just to be realistic about what you can do as far as your healthy living and your lifestyle. I hope that has been helpful. You know, when people put themselves out there on the internet, they open themselves up to criticism. It wasn't like any kind of bashing at her or anything like that. I don't know the lady. I don't watch her content. I was just there for the what I eat in a day and the commentary centered around that. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you can keep on getting videos like this because I'm going to continue to do them. Um, I find them very like educational for me and like even like ideas that you can take from other people and other creators and how they're trying to like live their lifestyle and stuff like that. Hopefully I can do my what I eat in a day sometime soon, but y'all I'm struggling right now as far as my mental health goes and my eating habits goes. So I'm trying to like huh, deal with everything, but I'm gonna be back soon, okay? So y'all watch for that. Make sure you continue to spread kindness in a world full of hate. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.